Today I'm going to be working on the uh, chain stay. So let me show you what I've got going on here. I brought in my original plans which were glued to the uh, template and then cut out and then also the other part of the original plans. Um, now if you were looking at this from the top this is what you would see. Uh, imagine if you would bottom bracket shell be in here and then the center line of the wheel would actually be along the edge of the paper here. Um, the reason why I brought this in was for the reference points. You know, you got the center of the bottom bracket shell, edge of the bottom bracket shell, get edge of the rear dropout, and the uh, center of the uh, rear axle. Uh, the reason why these points are important is because you're going to want the uh, the rear dropout to be parallel with the other rear dropout on the other side. Um, you'll notice here that I've had to to make this so it comes down and then goes flat. Uh, I didn't originally want to do it like this. I originally wanted to go from the edge of the bottom bracket shell here up to the rear dropout, but I'm afraid I'll have problems with clearance on the, the small chain ring. So what I've done was I've made sure that there's plenty of clearance by making this straight across and then tapering up. Uh, that also caused another problem which may not actually be a problem and that is that, that there's only going to be about an eighth of an inch clearance between the, the wheel and the uh, inside of the chain stay. Um, along those same notes, I've drawn this out at three quarters of an inch, but this might actually be a little bit thinner. The reason why I say that is because I'll have carbon fiber, foam core, and then more carbon fiber. That foam core will be uh, five eighths of an inch thick, and I'm not really exactly sure on how thick I'm going to make the carbon fiber yet, um, but I don't imagine it going over three quarters of an inch as a whole. So I may not have a problem there at all. I'm just worried about if I hit a bump or something, pothole or whatever, and makes that weird wheel wobble if it hit that, that chain stay and I want it to, dark, to damage the uh, carbon fiber. So I'm going to go ahead and use what I've got here and I'm going to cut that out. Um, I'm also going to cut a new template from this template so I can build the, uh, the chain stay up because you know if you're looking at it like this it would actually taper up to that 130 millimeters that we need. So. Hopefully that explains everything that I'm going to do. It'll make more sense when I show it to you. So, let's go to that point. All right, so here's an update on the chain stay build. Um, basically what I've done is I've created some, some templates off the master template, and I cut the chain stay out in three different sections. There's a front section, a middle section, and then a, and a, a rear dropout section. Um, I didn't have any half inch, which I wanted for, for this area here. Um, all I had was some 5 eighths. So I'm going to have to plane this uh, front section down. Now, if you remember, like I was telling you, um, I'm going to have to keep this area here flat because of the front chain ring. I don't want it to, to touch anything. Um, and then it goes from this point here and tapers up. And then it goes flat again. So you'll notice here I'll have to plane this one down too. So here's the, uh, here's the plans that we drew. So it'll go on there kind of like that. I don't know if you can see it real good, but hopefully that'll kind of give you an idea. It looks really, really thick right now just because I've got this other side on here too. So anyway, I will get that cut out and then give you an update. Okay, so I got this split apart and I went ahead and, and cut out the uh, chain stay pieces like I said I was going to. Um, I got this plane down and I cut this out on a table saw on an angle to work well. And then I also got this front part uh, plane down. Um, now all I need to do is go in and, and fill this with some Bondo or some wood filler or whatever you want to use if you're doing a similar type of project. You can see here how on the original one I had the round over. No big deal. I'll just fill that in and shape it. So uh, also another note on this. I got this cut out here. Um, what's going to happen here is I'm going to put some pipe on here that's uh, two inches wide. Um, that's the outer diameter. And that will be where the uh, headset goes for the cups. I didn't want it to go all the way across because I want this part here to be as slim as possible. So all you'll see is just enough of the head tube here um, to fit that headset in there. And then I'll figure out some way to transition this really nice. So this will be nice and, uh, and skinny right through here. So hopefully it'll be a nice aerodynamic look to it. Um, there's the other half of the uh, the plug there, and um, 
what I've done is I've used a Super 90. It's the uh, 3M Super 90 spray to, to hold those on. And when I put this down on a piece of plywood or something flat before I spray it uh, to do the female mold, I'll probably put some screws in it and then fondo it and then spray it, sand it, polish it, and then we'll make the uh, female mold on top of it. So there you have it. Uh, I'll fill you in when we get a little farther on in the uh, process.